Hi, I'm Ron Kagan, CEO of the Detroit Zoological Society. The Detroit Zoo and the Belle Isle Nature Center are home to almost 500 birds from 55 different species. Our guests can see birds swimming and waddling through the Polk Penguin Conservation Center or flying here in the Matilda Wilson Free Flight Aviary. You can also see rescued bald eagles and sandhill cranes for whom we are giving sanctuary. We think it's important to help all birds, not just those that reside on our two campuses. In this regard, the Detroit Zoological Society leads and supports many bird conservation initiatives here in Michigan and around the world. We're also involved in a number of related education programs within our community. In a moment, you're going to learn about some of these incredible projects from our life sciences staff who work tirelessly around the world, from Antarctica to South Africa to the Falkland Islands and even here in Michigan. Populations of wild vultures are declining rapidly across the continent of Africa. There are numerous threats to wild populations of vultures. Here in South Africa, power line collisions are one of the biggest threats to wild vultures. Vultures can also face long-term health problems from eating carcasses that have bullet fragments in them, causing lead poisoning. There are 11 species of African vulture, and currently, seven of those species are either endangered or critically endangered. Vultures play a significant role in ecosystem health. They are essentially nature's cleanup crew. By scavenging and cleaning up carcasses, they can prevent the spread of diseases such as anthrax and botulism. It is hugely problematic that their populations are plummeting and so quickly. The Detroit Zoological Society is working with Volpro, an African vulture conservation organization that rescues and rehabilitates injured and poisoned vultures. Volpro's primary goal is to rehabilitate the wild vultures that they receive and release them back into the wild. Ready for your big day? But when they are unable to do this, the wild vultures stay here and breed and the offspring are released back into the wild. We are assisting this work at Volpro by doing routine physical examinations, parasite checks, blood work, and lead testing. This is an extremely important project and the latest in the Detroit Zoological Society's comprehensive wildlife conservation programs. We are committed to saving birds around the world. Hi, my name is Flo Yates and I'm a zookeeper for the Detroit Zoological Society. I recently returned from a six-week expedition to Antarctica conducting scientific research on how the changing climate is affecting populations of penguins and other seabirds. The Detroit Zoological Society is a partner of the Polar Oceans Research Group, which has been conducting an ongoing ecological research project for more than 40 years at the U.S. Palmer Station. Scientific findings indicate that the climate is severely warming, which is affecting all aspects of the global environment, but particularly in Antarctica. The amount of sea ice in this polar region is declining year after year, and as a result, populations of many species of wildlife that depend on it, from algae to krill to penguins and other seabirds, are suffering. During my time in Antarctica, we studied every species of seabird surrounding Palmer Station including populations of Adelie, Chinstrap, and Gen 2 penguins, as well as giant petrels, brown and south polar skuas, and kelp gulls. We conducted a breeding chronology study, which involved the daily monitoring of penguin nests, from the time that the birds lay their eggs, to the chicks hatching, and ultimately fledging. We assessed the birds' body condition, recorded egg morphometric data, and took measurements and weights of birds and eggs. We also counted the number of individual birds in colonies of Adeli, Chinstrap, and Gentoo penguins on various islands. One of these islands was home to more than 6,000 Gentoo penguins. The DZS has worked with the Polar Oceans Research Group for a number of years. Its founder, the world-renowned polar ecologist and penguin expert, Dr. Bill Frazier, was a consultant on the design of the Detroit Zoo's award-winning Polk Penguin Conservation Center. This is the second time a member of our animal care team has been invited to be a part of this rare and extraordinary opportunity to conduct scientific research in Antarctica. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Tom Schneider. I'm the curator of birds for the Detroit Zoological Society. Great Lakes piping plovers are tiny shorebirds that nest on sandy beaches. The same beaches that attract people, pets, and development. By 1986, this population had dwindled to just 17 nesting pairs. A federal recovery program was established by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Scientists discovered that some of the plovers were abandoning their eggs. They realized that salvaging these eggs could contribute significantly to the species recovery. With our expertise in bird care and incubation, the Trade Zoological Society developed a plan to hatch out abandoned eggs and rear the tiny chicks until they could be released to join wild plovers. For nearly two decades, our bird care staff has spent several months each year at the University of Michigan's Biological Station in Pelston, joined by staff from other accredited zoos and aquariums. We have led the effort to collect abandoned eggs, artificially incubate them, rear the chicks, and release them into the wild when they fledge. 238 birds have been reared and released by our team. We are nearly halfway to our goal of bringing the nesting pairs up to 150. They are still vulnerable to extinction from predation, nest disturbance, and beach development, but their numbers are now stable. DZS staff will head up north again in May to continue our invaluable work saving these birds. Hi, I'm Dr. Ann Duncan, the Director of Animal Health for the Detroit Zoological Society. The Detroit Zoological Society has a long history of leadership in the areas of penguin conservation, health, and welfare. In recent years, we've applied this expertise to our work with falcons conservation as we develop an understanding of the threats impacting wild penguin and seabird populations in the Falkland Islands. The Falkland Islands are extremely remote, located 300 miles off the eastern tip of South America. There's an estimated 800 miles of coastline, which provides critical habitat for four species of penguins and numerous other seabirds. The DZS was asked to develop a project that would explore the impacts of infectious disease, pollution, and tourism on these populations. This is the most comprehensive scientific study of the health and welfare of wild animals the DZS has ever undertaken. On a recent expedition, the DZS veterinary team took blood and feather samples from nearly 100 penguins of two species that live in different locations within the Falkland Islands. As part of our research, we focused on new testing capabilities and our strengths as leaders in animal welfare. We are fortunate to have an endocrinology lab right here at the Detroit Zoo, specializing in the science of animal welfare. Our team at the Center for Zoo and Aquarium Animal Welfare and Ethics is using cutting edge testing to measure the potential impacts of disease and exposure to environmental toxins in humans by measuring stress hormones and damage to DNA, which has been linked to chronic stress. We are still waiting for the results of this study. The information gathered will provide us with an understanding of the current health status of the penguin colonies in these areas. Hi, I'm Bonnie Van Dam, the Associate Curator of Birds for the Detroit Zoological Society. Animal care staff from the Detroit Zoo and other wildlife organizations worldwide rushed to South Africa last month to aid in the rescue and rehabilitation of more than 1,800 lesser flamingo chicks. The birds were abandoned in their nesting grounds near Kimberley in the Northern Cape. After a season of little to no rain and high temperatures, Camphers Dam dried up rapidly, causing the parents to abandon eggs and hatchlings due to a lack of food. This dam is one of only six wetlands in the world where lesser flamingos breed. DZS veterinarian Dr. Sarah Woodhouse was one of the first foreign responders to lend a hand in this massive rescue effort. She was already in South Africa when the crisis unfolded, working on a vulture rehabilitation and conservation project. I was able to join her days later, followed by another DZS staff member. We began working around the clock alongside other wildlife organizations across Africa, Europe, and other accredited U.S. zoos. We personally oversaw the care of nearly 40 rescued chicks, feeding them four to five times a day and monitoring their health. These vulnerable flamingo chicks would have died if left in the wild. The work of our animal care staff and others was invaluable to this rescue. This effort underscores the value and importance of zoos and aquariums and the work they do to save species around the world. 
As you can see, we are saving birds all over the globe and of course at home. In addition to our scientific field work, we participate in many local programs like the Urban Bird Treaty. This initiative aims to make urban environments safe for birds and provides communities with opportunities for birding and for conservation. We're also helping to address the problem of bird collisions. A staggering one billion birds die every year colliding with windows. We're working with an extraordinary scientist in bird collision prevention to make sure buildings at the Detroit Zoo and Belle Isle Nature Center are safe for birds. Specialized bird-friendly glass windows have been installed on all our buildings that allow the birds visual cues to see the danger and avoid the collision. We're also educating our guests about this so they too can help. Bird silhouette decals are available in our gift shops that can be applied to windows at home to minimize this tragic, common, but avoidable type of accident. There are countless ways we can all help save wildlife and wild places. It is because of you that we're able to make an impact for these incredible species. Their very existence is threatened. It's our hope and our life's work that they survive and thrive for generations to come.